Hi and welcome to this how-to. My name is Arne de Geer and I'm a technical marketing engineer for Azure Native Files. Today we will explore the TCO Estimator tool for SAP deployments on Azure Native Files, which was created by Sean Luce, also a technical marketing engineer, and Tobias Brandl, an SAP solution architect. And Toby is joining me here on this call today and he will take us through using this estimator. Welcome to this how-to, Toby. Thanks, Arndt, and thanks everyone for watching this demo. Before we jump into the demo itself, let me quickly give you an introduction into how sizing is generally done with SAP on Azure NetApp files. One thing that is fundamentally different to SAP configurations using Azure Managed Disk is that with Azure NetApp files, we're not sizing individual volumes for individual systems one by one, but we really have to look at the entire landscape and the sum of all requirements. This includes requirements for high availability, for backup, and for disaster recovery, because Azure Net Files is much more than simply another type of storage. The other important thing to remember is that with Azure Net Files, you can change capacity and performance on the fly at any point in time. Therefore, it doesn't make a lot of sense to size for rare peak performance requirements, but rather size for the what we often call steady state of the environment. And of course, while tools like the one I'm introducing here make sizing exercises much easier, there's still some experience and background knowledge required to get to the optimal solution. If you feel you need help with this, don't hesitate to reach out to the SAP on Azure NetApp Files experts at NetApp or Microsoft. We are here to help you. Okay, now let's jump into the demo. When you open the calculator, you first get a welcome screen with a short help text. Let's close this to get to the tool right away. The tool is separated into five sections. The Add Systems and Volume sections is where you input your SAP landscape data and also adjust all sizing settings. All the other sections provide information about the calculated sizing. Let's start with adding data to our sizing. There are two forms to do that. The Add SAPANA System form lets you easily enter SAPANA databases. The Add Single Volume form is used to enter individual volumes such as global transport shares, etc. The forms on the right provide the option to adjust sizing settings and parameters, which I will explain later. Okay, let's enter our first SAPANA production system. The SID and the description fields are used to easily identify systems and volumes later on. The system type defines if this is a production system or any type of non-production. This has an influence on the performance calculation. Next, we provide the RAM size of the HANA database, let's say 4 terabyte in this example. The RAM size is used to calculate the required volume capacity. The HA field defines whether this system is using HANA system replication for high availability or not. Since this is a production system, I select yes. The HA performance factors can be used to downsize the HA secondary node. However, typically this should be kept at the default of 100%. The host count defines if this is a single host or multiple hosts of HANA system. And in the last field, we select the target capacity pool for this system. With ANF, the guideline is to consolidate as many systems and volumes into a single capacity pool as possible. Okay, now we add the system to the sizing. Let's add another system right away to make the sizing a bit more interesting. This time we enter a QAS system. Therefore, we select the system type QAS. The RAM size for this system is 2TB and we don't need any HA config here. We add the system to the same capacity pool P1. Okay, let's do one more. This time we add a DR system in a different region. System type in this case is DR and the RAM size is identical to the production, so 4 terabyte. For the capacity pool, we now select P2 because capacity pools are bound to a specific region. Therefore, we definitely need another capacity pool for the DR system. To finish off the landscape input, we add a single volume to the sizing. Even though single volumes don't really have a SID, we still need to provide one here for identification. Just use something meaningful for your volume, for example, FS1 for file system 1. This volume should be used as a central transport share. The system type does not influence the sizing of individual volumes, but it's more informational in this case. Now we need to provide the target size and the required throughput. Let's say 1 terabyte with 64 megabytes per second throughput. The daily change rate, the snapshot retention, and the backup retention influence the snapshot and ANF backup capacity calculation for this volume. And we need to add this volume to the same pool P1 where our SAP HANA systems are already are in. 
Okay, that should work as in sample landscape. Now let's quickly go through the different settings. In the capacity pool section, we can assign pools to different regions. Since we've used P2 for our DR system, let's assign West US as a DR region to this pool. The performance modifiers define how the performance calculation for sub-HANA systems should be done. The performance baseline is set to the official SAP HANA KPIs. Usually there is no need to change these at all. The performance factors define for each system type the relative performance compared to the KPIs. For prod systems, this is set to 100%, but non-prod systems don't need to fulfill the KPIs and usually also don't really need that much performance. To start with, keep the default values, which are based on best practices and experience from thousands of sizings we've done in the past. One comment on the DR value. This is set to the minimum value of 1% because we want to use ANF cross-region replication for DR protection. With CRR, the target volume doesn't need any performance during normal operation. Only during DR tests or a real failover, more performance is required. But that can then be provisioned on demand. It's not required to provide that performance upfront. The snapshots and backup settings define the capacity calculation for snapshot-based backups of SAP HANA systems. The first two columns define the block level change rates for the data and the log volume, sorry, the data and the shared volume for different system types. The snapshot column defines the retention for the primary snapshots on the ANF volumes. The backup column defines the retention on the ANF backup side. All the values here represent common best practices and should be used as a starting point if you don't have a lot of experience with SAP HANA sizings on ANF yet. By the way, all settings we've just discussed can be changed at any point in time and the changes will be immediately reflected in the sizing results. Now let's look at the sizing results. We'll start from the bottom. The volume summary lists all volumes that have been generated via the provided input. As we can see, for each subpana system, the required data, log and shared volumes have been added with their required capacities. Based on the settings, additional snapshot capacities have been calculated and are part of the total required capacity per volume. The throughput requirements are derived from the system type and the performance modifiers we've discussed before. If you need to remove a system or an individual volume from the sizing, you can do that by clicking on the X to the right of each volume. For SAP HANA systems, all volumes of the selected system will be removed together. Since ANF deployments are based on capacity pools, not individual volumes, the calculator sums up all requirements from the volume list and shows them in the capacity pool summary. As you can see, in P1, 21.8 terabytes are required and a total of 1800 megabytes per second throughput. In the DR pool, P2, only 6.6 .6 terabyte capacity and basically no performance is required. These requirements are then used to calculate the most cost efficient capacity pool configuration. Remember that the capacity and performance requirement requirements could be fulfilled with all three service levels, standard, premium and ultra, if the pools are sized large enough. But only one of them is the most cost efficient solution. For our sample landscape, using a premium pool with 29 terabytes is the best option. This is a performance bound sizing that means slightly more capacity than required is provisioned. As a result, you see that there are seven terabytes of excess capacity available in this config. This unassigned capacity can be applied to existing or new volumes without any influence on the monthly cost. The sizing for the DR pool P2, however, is a capacity bound sizing. Since basically no performance is required for the DR replication, the standard service level works fine. In this case, there are 105 megabytes per second unassigned in the pool, which can be used, for example, to perform small DR tests, etc., at no additional cost. The total cost for the primary ANF storage in this example is roughly $9,800 per month. Finally, the ANF backup cost section shows the required capacities for the offloaded snapshot backups. 9 terabytes are required for the baseline copies, plus roughly 68 terabytes for the data changes during the 30 days retention. This adds roughly $3,900 to the total monthly cost for this SAP on ANF solution. One important thing to mention about the tool is that as soon as you refresh or leave the web page, all your input is reset. In order to save your sizing for later or to share it with someone else, 
you can use the export config option at the top of the page. Simply provide a file name and hit export. This generates a JSON file with all input data and settings and stores it on your local machine. You can then also make changes in the JSON file directly. This is quite handy if you want to do mass changes or auto-generate sizing input from other sources like existing SAP landscape lists. Whenever you want to come back to the sizing, simply reopen the sizing tool and import a JSON file. You can then continue to work on the sizing from when you had exported it. Another option to quickly share a specific sizing with someone else is to use the share config button. That feature generates an URL which will always bring you back to the exact sizing state of when the URL was generated. This concludes the short intro of the SAP on Azure Now file sizing estimator. I hope you found this useful. Now, back to you Arndt. Thanks for this comprehensive demo of the TCO estimation tool, Toby. We saw how the SAP landscape should be sized in its entirety and not per the individual volumes. And the backup should always be included in the calculations, especially since running SAP on Azure Native Files brings great advantages such as dramatically reduced backup windows, ability to clone snapshots for feeding fresh data into test and development, uninterrupted scale-up of both capacity and performance, and of course, a competitive or even lower TCO compared to SSD storage. You can now try this tool for yourself by going to aka.ms slash ANFSAPCALC or ANFSAPCALC. Scanning the QR code will take you there in an instant as well, so check it out. And this concludes our how-to. Thanks for watching.